to your oil business? Well, bottom line is, is that the Energy Administration Agency, which is the mm -hmm. Biden energy uh, source of, of knowledge, they say that even under the IRA benefits, that only 15 percent of our fleet right. by 2030 is going to be uh, electric vehicles. Mm. Um, and so th even the, the Biden administration is saying this isn't possible, but they're trying to put a regulation in place that 60 percent of vehicles sold in the United States in 2032 is going to be electric. Mm. We cannot afford to do this. And by the way, most of the materials that we need to make EVs are made in China. Mm. We're going to need two and a half times more copper, according to S&P. We're going to need more lithium. We're going to need more cobalt. If it's not pr uh, produced in China, it's processed in China. So why would we be sacrificing American energy independence, American in energy independence that the, the world has continued to rely on, particularly with the war in Ukraine, to, to China right now? Well, it's interesting. The same Deborah Holland is breaking down. She's the one stopping the permitting for all the above, which That's is right. the strategy I think that you endure all the above, oil, gas, renewables, fine, nuclear, let's let a thousand flowers bloom, but they won't. They want to kill your uh, business. Now, uh, I wanted to get your take. The House Republicans, Kevin McCarthy and company, uh, Steve Scalise was the quarterback, has come up, uh, you know, with H.R. 1, which would reopen uh, all of the um, fossil fuels, which is what we need. We're going to have permitting reform, important permitting reform. So are you all going to get behind that? We have endorsed H.R. 1. We think it's the right policy for America. But it's not just good for oil and gas. It's also good for those that are trying to produce more renewables in this country mm -hmm. as well. It is an all-of-the-above approach. And I think Democrats and Republicans should unite together to actually pass this legislation. And by the way, you hit on another important point. If we're going to power the future, we need to be able to mine for the future as well. Try permitting a mine in this country right now to produce the kind of materials that they're going to need to electrify this country. Should, it's almost impossible. She, this Halland stopped the um, Iron Range up in Minnesota, Lake Twin Superior, or whatever. Uh, she just stopped it. So she, maybe she's crying because she's stopped so much and she's damaging economic growth. If you look at economic growth, it's kind of non-existent. Now, the other question is... What, what will the oil and gas companies do in the next 10 years? What, what's their strategy, if you will? Well, our strategy right now is to make sure that we're stopping these policies. Yeah, because if right. these policies get enacted, right. it's going to hurt American consumers. It's going to raise prices. And we'll be, we'll be helping our largest geopolitical foe, China, on the world stage right now. How many is, people fact, are employed? In, in, in there are 12 Boston. million 12, Americans right. uh, employed by the oil and gas. And industry. secondary and tertiary impact? It would be huge. Double. I mean, you, 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 double, you, triple. It's 8% of American GDP. And I like to say it's the first 8% of American GDP. Oh. Because we cannot do what America does best, which is produce and manufacture for the world uh, American energy the without that 8%. The of cleanest. It. That's interesting. I didn't know that 8% number. That's a big number. And it was 12 million jobs. 12 million jobs. That's just, but, you know, the diner across the street that exactly employs right. 10 people, you got to look at that too. Well, all right, Mike Summers, it's a good fight. Keep it up. It's a good fight. Um, Meaning no disrespect to Secretary Howland, but she is dead wrong and has been from day one. Thanks a million. Great to be with you. This is the House of Senate. Joining me now, Mike Summers, President and CEO of American Petroleum Institute. Hold on a second, Mike. One of my favorites, Deb Howland, the Interior Secretary. Take a listen to this. I really do have to say that um, all of this is because climate change is the crisis of our lifetime. We have an obligation to future generations to make sure that we have a planet for them to live on. And that's why I'm here. She's breaking down. She's crying because of this. She ought to cry because she won't issue any permits that would even help electric vehicle batteries. I mean, what's, what is up with this whole story? Well, Larry, you hit on something which is really important. This administration has continually worked on making sure that we don't have the permits that we need to get the materials that we need to even enable the, uh, the transition that they're talking mm -hmm. about. The real concern that we have right now, though, is they want to convert an entire fleet of vehicles that use an internal combustion engine today, mm -hmm. and they want us to be all using electric vehicles by 2032. This is a, a system, a country that has been really built on the back of our automobile in industry. We need those workers, and we need to make sure that we can continue to drive the vehicles we want. This is a policy that's good for China and bad for America. Yeah, that's right. China's biggest beneficiary. No, no choice. What happens to the oil and gas companies? We were going down this 
America using crude oil, 49% gasoline, 26% diesel, 8% jet fuel. That's 83% of the oil use. Now, there are other uh, refined and distillates that they use. Was it due to the oil and gas? If the Bidens get this, I, I don't know that they will. A lot of people think they won't. But if they get it, and you have all these electric cars by whatever, 2032, 2035, what